Hi everybody, it's Carla. I wanted to hop on to have a quick chat with you today. Uh, first thing I wanted to share is that uh, it's been three years since I started this YouTube channel and this week the channel was uh, monetized and I wanted to take a minute to express my gratitude to everybody who subscribed to this channel to make that possible and to just anybody who's ever watched a video on uh, this channel. I just appreciate the support so much. Uh, when I first started YouTube, I didn't know anything about it, and today I only know slightly more, but I am learning more all the time. Uh, originally, I had a podcast, which I found to be a bit easier um, because, um, you know, the whole thing of not showing my face on camera, just a hang-up that I had or still have and I'm trying to get over. Um, I had a podcast on the Anchor platform, and now they're called um, Spotify for Podcasters. But that's where I started. Um, I just thought that might be easier. Um, you'll see me glance over here because this is where my notes are. I still can't do this without notes, so pardon me for that. But in any event, um, I started this channel because I had um, hoped to be a resource for students who... Um, we're studying the classics and uh, to share with them some analysis and maybe give some summaries and uh, provide some audio of some of the um, um, required readings, uh, some of the common required readings, uh, just to, you know, to help them out a bit while at the same time sharing my love for the classics, you know, the, the settings and the theme, the plots, the language, the characters uh, of some of the classic novels and just how they excite me. And I just wanted to be able to share that with people. Uh, and also, I homeschool my grandson, so I thought that he might benefit from it also. Um, podcasting uh, worked for me because I didn't have to show my face on camera, which is a big challenge for me. Um, and I'm still getting used to hearing my own voice, even with the podcast. But I found that uh, just to be a bit easier than, than doing video. Uh, but I, I do hope to get better at this, so please bear with me. Um, I try to appear relaxed and casual and natural, but my own assessment of it is that I come off kind of stiff and uh, like I'm giving a lecture that nobody really wants to hear. So I know there is so much room for improvement uh, and I am working on it and I hope to get there one day. So uh, please bear with me. Um, Another challenge uh, that I have, as you can clearly see now, is speaking without notes. That's difficult for me because uh, I can know exactly what it is that I want to say, but because I do a lot of writing, uh, everything is just easier to write it down. And once it's written, you know, it's, it's just written. But to try to remember it, I can't. You know, I lose my train of thought and I jumble things up. And uh, it's, it's just a mess. And I understand how, you know, it's no fun to watch somebody on camera who's always referring to their notes, uh, always glancing over at their notes. And that really is something that I hope to get better with over time. But I'm just not there yet. So, uh, again, bear with me. Um, at first, um, when I had the Anchor podcast, uh, Anchor, again, which is now Spotify for podcasters, um, I treated the uh, podcast and the YouTube experience like they were the same, but, but they're not. And that's part of why I had such trouble trying to get this YouTube thing right. Uh, the first time I applied uh, for the YouTube Partner Program, my application was rejected. And as I reviewed my channel, I saw that this is just a podcast. Now, three years ago, when I started this channel, uh, you couldn't upload your RSS, your, your podcast RSS feed. Now you can, but three years ago that just wasn't the um, that wasn't the case. And um, again, just two completely different platforms. And I was really kind of treating them as though they were the same. I knew if I was going to get anywhere with this channel or help anybody um, get over their fear of the classics or to help them uh, maybe gain some interest in the classics, I was going to have to show my face uh, at some point. Um, and this is 
what I'm trying to do now. And I have done, I've done other videos, but again, I'm always nervous, but this is me working through the nervousness. Um, again here as I review my notes. Um, so in that um, rejection that I got from YouTube in the beginning, uh, it set me on a, um, on a path to just really reviewing my channel, really analyzing it and see what I could do to change this podcast <laughs> uh, that I had uploaded uh, onto YouTube into an actual YouTube channel. And I had so many videos, so many episodes, and uh, I ended up having to delete so many things, which I regret, but I knew that was really the only way forward. I had to get rid of a lot of those things in order to get this channel in shape to actually be a YouTube channel. So I spent a considerable amount of time working on that, and then even when I thought I was finished, I would always go back and think, no, it's not quite ready yet, it's not quite ready. And then when I reapplied, um, you know, a few days ago, I really wasn't sure that I had made um, all the corrections or that I had uh, revised the channel enough to, uh, to pass that inspection, and I really didn't know what to expect. Um, it was sad losing a lot of the things that I had recorded, but again, I knew that was the only way to go forward with the channel was to just let go of some of those things and I did and it turned out fine because I got the news that the channel was approved for the YouTube partner program and I'm so grateful for that. Um, one of the uh, other problems with that and deleting so many videos is that, you know, you have to have 4,000 watch time hours. And I was always concerned, you know, in deleting all these videos, is it also going to affect the number of watch time hours that I have? Am I going to put myself in a watch time hours deficit and then uh, not be qualified to um, apply to the program? But thankfully, even with all the deletions, um, and I edited some videos so that I could keep them, I had to learn how to edit videos, and I'm still not great with that, but I guess I did it to the satisfaction of the people at YouTube because, uh, again, they approved my channel for the program. So uh, moving forward, I am really excited to uh, try to be on camera more, to share more with you um, in video, and to share more great readings with you, uh, summaries and analysis, and to, uh, you know, maybe answer your questions and uh, get your feedback on what you would like to hear, what you would like to see on this channel going forward. I'm certainly open to that. Um, so... Um, Let's see, what else? Um, let me say that I, uh, through that whole experience of, you know, trying to fix my channel and, and beef it up so that it would be a real YouTube channel, um, I learned a lot in that experience, and I know that there's still so much more to learn, um, and I'm, I'm up for that challenge, but um, I think the biggest thing is getting comfortable and uh, trying to exude some kind of warmth or something so that people will uh, not just want to uh, listen to the audios on this channel, but also engage with the video as well. And I know that's, um, that's going to be a big thing for me. So I'm working on it. I'm up to the challenge. And um, I'm always open to your feedback. And uh, please hit the comments. Tell me what you would like to see going forward. Is, do you have a, a favorite classic? Do you have uh, a favorite character in literature that you think about? I find that... Um, there are characters that kind of stay with me. You know, one, for example, is Philip Carey from Of Human Bondage. I think about him all the time. And the reason I think that I think about Philip Carey, he's one of many characters that I think about, is that I see him in everyday life. You know, Somerset Maugham wrote that novel back in, I think, 1918, maybe. But... Uh, the character, Philip Carey, and the things that he experienced are timeless. So something can happen, for example, I'll be talking to a friend and they'll be telling me about an experience they had, and I can say, you know, Philip Carey had that same experience, and I don't know, it may drive my friends nuts, I don't know, but the, um, 
connection between those characters written back then and real life people today is just very strong. And that's really one of the important things that I want to um, convey to people, that just because it was written so long ago, uh, there are things that were written eons ago, but because those things involve people, it's still relevant today because people have kind of always had the same experiences. They may not have always had the same kind of technology, uh, may not have always had the same kind of fashion, uh, the same kind of language, but who people are inside, um, that's just you know a people thing and it crosses generations, it crosses centuries because people will always be people. And I'm just so thankful that people from any era uh, would take the time to write these stories down for us to enjoy today. So now I think I'm kind of rambling a little bit and I'm getting uncomfortable, but I will say thank you again for all your support of this channel. And I look forward to your comments, your suggestions. Uh, also, you can email me, carlareadstheclassics at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, that's it. Until next time. Bye-bye.